I graduated at North High School in 1940, went to, went to Iowa State, and I was on Iowa State's campus when, when the Pearl Harbor was bombed. In fact, I was in the library like a, like a good student. I just happened to be in the library. <laughs> I just had, they said, well, Pearl Harbor's bound. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you said, yeah, well, yeah. Well, and then you got to, then you get to think, where's Pearl Harbor? I, I never heard of Pearl Harbor. <laughs> it was required that to take ROTC, uh, you know, I mean, I didn't have any excuse not to. It was all right with me. Uh, I, uh, we had a draft board. Uh, the Judge Grun was the chairman judge. He was a Jewish fellow who was a judge in, the, Here in, in Des Moines. Okay. And, uh, uh, and he was head of the draft, uh, you know. Uh, I went to, to see him personally. I, I don't know why I was there, but he, uh, he had talked to me. I had to uh, visit with him about something. And he said, well, what do you, what do you, are you in school? And I said, yeah. And uh, he said, well, he said, I'll tell you what, he said, uh, uh, we used the term Negro then, as brethren African American or whatever. And he said, well, this, said, we, we don't have very many Negroes in college. And he said, if you're in college, you're, you're making passing grades, he said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to send you to the, to, to the war, you know, to the military, you know. Well, I was kind of ambivalent about it. I wasn't trying to not go, but I wasn't trying to go either initially. I'd go to church and meet these parents, friends, neighborhood, neighbors, and they'd say, well, what are you, Jimmy, what are you still doing here? You know, my son's over in Guam, or my, you know. Well, I got to thinking about that. I said, I don't know if I want to just be isolated. I, uh, you know, I, I could see the, the future where everybody said, well, you, you stayed home while we were over there getting shot at, shot at, you know. So I didn't want that either. So I wanted to carry my share of the load, you know. So uh, I, got, I got to thinking, I said, you know, I, uh, I kind of, I, I said I did want, want, want to fly an airplane, you know, and when that, that kind of came along and got to, kind of got in the mix, Sounds like it would be in interesting, you know. Uh, I finally concluded that I, I, I did want to go into the Army Air Corps, and I found out I could get in if I could pass tests. I didn't stay at Camp Dodge but about a week. Right. And uh, after, after I, I, I took all these, the first day or two, I took, took these tests, and they, they came to me and told me that I had passed, and uh, I could... Uh, I was going to the Army Air Corps, and uh, which, for which I was pleased. By the time I had been here about five days, they told me, came to me and told me, said, you're leaving t tomorrow morning or, you know, right away. And I was going, to, I was going to, uh, to south, uh, to Biloxi, Mississippi. Now, everything's segregated. You know, white and black don't do anything together. But... I didn't know how it was going to be in Mississippi. I knew it wasn't going to be good, but uh, the, the, when when we got when we when we got on the train, there were two white guys and me. The three of us were going to St. Louis, and I I, I went to get on the train, and the guy wouldn't let me on the train. Uh, I had all these papers, you know, uh, official papers. I I knew U.S. government. I. I knew I had, I was legitimate, and yeah, yeah, this is Uncle Sam here, you know. And he said, well, it was, what, what I didn't know, it was the Jim Crow car, you know, the, the trains were segregated starting in St. Louis. And uh, I, I as, as a black person, I could not get on the train where the white people were getting on. Well, I had to get on the Jim Crow car. That was up close to the... Uh, the coal part, but the, 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 well, the difference, uh, they, they would have somebody get on a train with like ham sandwiches or something like that. You know, you didn't, uh, uh, now they, they had dining car for the white people. Yeah, you know, they, but uh, uh, for African Americans, they, they have some guy with some, uh, some ch ch fried chicken or ham sandwiches or something, you know. Yeah, we got the Gulf port. Okay. When, we, when we got there first, uh, when we when we got down there, 
looked like the engine of the train was almost in the water, almost in the ocean. We were right at the Gulf. And uh, we took, they had a military van, a big, big, with a canvas cover over it, uh, to take the soldiers uh, off the train to uh, go from Gulfport to Biloxi. And that was only 20 miles, 15, 10, 10 or 15 miles, something like that, from Gulfport to Biloxi. I, ha I had to wait to get, uh, let, let all these white guys get on this thing before I got on. And then I had to go walk through all of them to go to the back, because blacks should have to be in the back and the whites in the front. And uh, some of them got smart with me, pushed me and shoved me and all that stuff like that. And hell, I couldn't do nothing because, hell, one of me and by, by the, it seemed like about a hundred of them. I was just glad that, that, that the end of that trip was, it was in, in sight. Uh, and I can remember the, one, the first thing I heard, I was seeing all these guys working out there in the, in the, in the you know, on, on, the, on the air base. And, uh, and they saw this, this trailer, some trailer coming in, pulling people, you know. And, 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 and all, I, all they would say, you'll be sorry. <laughs> you'll be sorry. I didn't care. Everybody, everybody I saw said, yelled, you'll be sorry. I, after I got there, I knew what they were talking about. The initial training, well, what they, what they wanted you to do is know that you, every place you go, you're going to go pretty much in formation. You're going to walk with other guys. And so, so they, they start you out uh, uh, with, with drill, you know, all kinds of drill, uh, uh, marching and, and, and drilling and so forth. And, of course, uh, the... Uh, uh, they put sent us on 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 uh, on bivouacs very very soon, but uh, what what they do is they 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 run you something awful, uh, and and of course that persisted through when I was in uh, cadets too. Uh, I you know hell I bet I could run from here to the fairground and back at, at that time, you know <laughs> after <laughs> before it was over. And they called me in one day. They found out they somebody had lost records. They didn't even know I was in, I was there. They, they they didn't know I was in in the army. See, I was supposed to be in Tuskegee in about thirty days. I didn't get to uh, Tuskegee till after Christmas. Uh, t Tuskegee was the college right. campus. Uh, they had uh, it was called Tuskegee Institute mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, it was mostly all classwork uh, and drill and physical and well we go on bivouacs camping and stuff like that uh, you, navigation uh, uh, and study aircraft engines you, t you also study theory of flight mm -hmm. you, you need to know something about what makes an airplane fly mm -hmm. uh, it's not quite what people think <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot different uh, but you uh, we're we're dying to get in them, you know. You you don't get your wings until about a year. Mm -hmm. Your first plane that you solo, to, uh, for us was the PT-17, okay. uh, the 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 Stearman, and uh, we we, yeah. we we uh, uh, I did that in about uh, I think it was six and a half hours. You're not supposed to do it before seven. I did it six and a half hours. That was the first one to, to solo. Jan January of '45, we were we were slated to finish. We we weren't thinking about the war being over. We just thinking about the survival. Right. You know, you know, because whatever, because you didn't have anything to say about wh what you did or what you didn't do. Anyhow, uh, you know, we were uh, yeah. uh, so we we graduated. After we graduated, we went from uh, Tuskegee to. Uh, 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 Pensacola. The war was going kind of, kind of tough at that time. I think, and uh, they had all the P-51s were over in Europe, and um, uh, they didn't, I, they didn't have any, any in the Pacific. I don't think at that time. So, uh, but we, while we were there, I, they, the word came out we're getting a new airplane. And we, we, of course, we knew they weren't P-51s, but we did get uh, new P-47s. 
that were flown into uh, into uh, Walterboro, uh, South Carolina. And the thing that shocked us to death, because I didn't know anything, I didn't know anything about it, was they were all women flying them. Went down to the to the airfield that day. They said, "With these new planes coming in," and then uh, we were all excited about it. And uh, when they got out, there was a bunch of women flying them. <laughs> we thought that, said, and you know, we thought we were hot shots, you know. <laughs> the military had this thing all segregated. Uh, blacks and whites couldn't go to the same officers club. They told them, well, they, they were going to fix a place for them. So some of the guys uh, they were, were upset. And uh, so we ended up with 104 officers being arrested in quarters in Indiana. I was in a night formation okay. flight when my plane caught a fire and I had to, I had to parachute out. I didn't use the uh, ejection because I was going to try to stay in there and get this fire out. I was riding it and throttling it and trying to, thought I'd get this, this flame out and I couldn't. So when I finally decided I had to leave, I wasn't thinking about the ejection. I just get out. I got out. Mm -hmm. well, the, the three guys that uh, were in this flight with me, they watched what happened to me. And when I when they when I parachuted, they didn't know whether I got out or not. They they knew I would, the plane went down. They saw the plane hit and crash. Uh, ended up in this parachute. Uh, well, well, I wasn't no more than about ten ten thousand feet up when I got yeah. out. I think. When I started to walk any place, I got to thinking the thing that you know that the swamps had you know they, you know they got alligators there you and know snakes. and snakes. If, the, the safest thing for me is to climb. Like there was a tree about this big. I climbed a tree and I was up about uh, 10, 15 feet off the ground. Uh, my leader of this formation, this squadron, uh, he 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 radioed and told them that one of our planes is down. And they knew where they knew where it was. Well, the, our military was good. They had they had an ambulance and uh, two three trucks and stuff like that. They came they came picked me up. I came down out of that tree when they got there. That girlfriend that, that I met in Chicago while I was in the service. Okay. And uh, uh, we when I got out of the service, uh, we had decided that uh, we wanted to see more of each other. We mm -hmm. did. Well, to make a long story short, uh, I. Uh, 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 had the GI Bill, I was going going back back to school, and uh, in, in order to in order to go to school, I had to work if I was going to get married. We kept thinking about getting married, and, and uh, I I I went to Drake. Decided to go to Drake, and that's why I took psychology and guidance and counseling, right, and that right. sort of thing. And that's how I got into education.